Welcome back, developers! In this video, we are taking a look at slow motion, bullet time, manipulating time, or whatever you want to call it, in the Unity 3D engine. And as you can see, we are both slowing down, but also speeding up this simulation. While some objects are affected, others, like the camera, are not. I'm sure most of you have probably already used this at some point. But there are a few simple misunderstandings, simple mistakes, pitfalls, and misconceptions that one could easily fall into, even if it's actually quite a simple thing to implement, and it's a great and fascinating effect in many cases. First we need to understand a little about how time works in the engine. You can see we have physics, animations, particles and sound all being affected by our slider that controls the scale of time, but our camera remain unaffected. How is that possible? The most common issue people run into when doing slow motion as far as I can tell anyway, from reading forum posts and comments and such, has to do with physics and different types of time. Let's take a look at the major components we need to understand before diving in. First we have time scale, we have fixed delta time and physics, audio and pitch, animations, as well as unscaled time. Really the first and most important part of this, the main variable that we are interested in, is time scale. As the name implies, it scales our time. It works as a sort of multiplier. A value of 1 means that time moves normally, while any value below that means it moves slower, all the way down to 0, which pauses the game. Values greater than 1 speed it up, and so on. I'm creating a new script here called time control, and our slider will call this public method, so that whenever the value is changed, it updates our method, while our class also knows about the slider and its values. We can now change the global timescale to be whatever the value of our slider is. But this is clearly not enough. Now we have the problem of physics behaving strangely. Audio is playing normally, and everything is affected, even though we want some not to be. There are two variables in Unity that are critical to understand. The first one you probably know well, it's delta time. It's the time that has passed since the last frame. But right now, we are more interested in its sibling, fixed delta time, that represents how long in seconds that passes between each physics calculation. If we make this value smaller, then our physics will be more precise, as they will happen more often. A larger value has the opposite effect. The time in between physics steps is fixed, but when we change our time scale, everything is happening at a different speed. We can see right now that things aren't moving as smoothly as we would like. To correct our physics, we can choose two different paths. First is to change the fixed time step. We may want to remember what our values were in the beginning, but we're lazy developers, and we're not going to remember something like that. So let's just have our script do that for us. Let's save the default value in our start method and change it just as we change the time scale. What do we set our new fixed time step to? Well, let's just multiply it by our time scale. If time scale is 1, everything will be normal. A lower value also means that we lower our fixed step, which means it's running more often, which means higher quality. But the opposite is also true. A time scale of 10 will ruin our physics since it runs so rarely. Let's instead clamp the value to a maximum value so that we never lose quality, but rather only gain more of it as time moves slower. The second option is to simply change the settings on a rigid body to interpolate. This means physics update just as often as normal, but we lerp or interpolate from the last position. This is more expensive for that individual object though, but not as expensive as updating physics more often for all the objects in the scene. The option you choose will be what your game requires. When I have a single sphere here, bouncing around like this, setting it to interpolate is the easiest choice. But if we had a lot of different physics objects in a more complex scene, and I needed all of them to respect the timescale, the first option might actually be better. The next issue you might notice is that sound still plays normal. To change this, we need to do a few things. Let's create a new audio mixer. By default, you don't have one. Double-click it to bring up the audio mixer window. Here we can route all of our audio through different mixers, apply effects, and so on. Select the mixer. Right-click on pitch and expose it to script. We can now alter the pitch of this audio mixer through our script. However, our audio sources won't automatically use this new mixer. We have to apply it manually, like so. In our script, we can now set the pitch to be the value of our slider.
And now for animations. We have a box prefab with a simple animation that bobs up and down. By default, it follows the timescale just like everything else. But if for some reason we wanted to move at normal speed, let's say our enemies are affected by bullet time, but we are not. You can set the animator to use unscaled time. That will ignore our timescale settings. We also have these green boxes here. They are a duplicate of the red animated boxes that also bob up and down, but their animators are set to unscaled time, whereas the red cubes are set to normal. Let's take a closer look at this unscaled setting. So we want to affect all these different parts of our game, but then we also selectively want to not affect certain other parts, just like we did with the animations just now. There is a way to do this selectively through script. Scale time is the one that you normally use. It's just called time. It includes delta time and fixed delta time. They are affected by timescaling. Unscaled time, on the other hand, is not affected by timescale at all. Imagine how you might want all the enemies in your scene, again, to slow down while the player moves unhindered. We would multiply our player movements with the unscaled delta time, rather than the normal delta time. As a developer, you want as much control as possible over every part of your game. So make sure to use both scale and unscaled time where needed. And that's really all I wanted to show you with this video. How you can change the timescale of our game and have physics, animations and sound update accordingly. We have covered the different variables of time that you need to know when messing with timescale. We know how it affects our scene and how to disregard it in one or several objects by using interpolation or unscaled time. You can download this little project or just view the code from my GitHub that will be linked in the description down below. Apart from what I just showed you, we also changed the background color, set the text on their slider, spawned the balls with random positions and different effects and so on. I also controlled the animations of these cubes by randomly setting the start values and changing their speeds throughout the script, and so on. If you're interested in any of that, you can check out the project. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with more Unity tutorials and game development tips. Until next time, happy coding!